but the threat continues to evolve. And in some ways, the threat today may be at its most heightened state since the attacks nearly 10 years ago. But I think if you just take those three pieces of evidence right there and add two plus two plus two, you have the U.S. government letting Mutsalab on the plane with an intentionally defective bomb. The war on terror is a fraud and it's being used in a manner to take away your rights for whatever reason. In addition to the core Al-Qaeda group, which still represents a threat to the United States despite its diminished capabilities, we now face threats from a number of Al-Qaeda associates that share its violent extremist ideology. Among these groups, we are also seeing an increased emphasis on recruiting Americans and Westerners to carry out attacks. They are also encouraging individuals in the West to carry out their own small-scale attacks, which require less of the coordination and planning that could raise red flags and lead to an attack's disruption. In my 16 years of deep research, it has become clear the number one threat to any sovereign free nation is its military. Look at Nazi Germany, look at Latin America, look at Asia, look at Africa, look at Eastern Europe. When you build up a giant paramilitary police force, it almost always tries to take over the society. And the last 12 years, We've watched an acceleration of militarization of police. We've watched threat fusion centers, the 10 FEMA regions expand, the governor's council. I've been to urban warfare drills where our own military is training to lock down and barricade and blockade U.S. cities and confiscate our firearms. This whole program accelerated after 1999 when Congress got rid of the Glass-Steagall Act. It allowed private central banks to issue unlimited counterfeit financial instruments known as derivatives and we've heard that oh the military and the police state the TSA it's for Al-Qaeda but now we see checkpoints in Tennessee run by the army shutting down highways searching citizens we see them in New York State with x-ray machines we see it all over the nation we see Marines running illegal checkpoints for DUI in California and when the governors and others complain they're told sit down and shut up it's under homeland security. It's under continuity of government. And now, as the world implodes, as the derivatives dollar devaluation crisis expands, we're seeing the police and military being called out against the general population all over the world as people go under austerity, as their pension funds are cut, as their benefits are cut, but their taxes go up. And here domestically in the U.S., this huge apparatus of oppression is openly being set up and deployed against the people. And I saw an amazing uh, blurb from Business Insider that linked to an article and the audio of the governor of Wisconsin on NPR saying, hey, we're cutting all these state employees. And we're going to make you pay more of your paycheck into a pension fund, which they loot out the back door. And if you don't like it, we're going to use the National Guard on you. And on the heels of the governor's speech, and just in case there are problems, the governor went on to say that he has called the Wisconsin National Guard and other agencies to make sure they would be ready, just in case. That's what this whole Homeland Security system's for. You know, they distract you over here with men living in caves in Central Asia. You think you're giving your rights up to protect you from the dangerous ankle-biting Al-Qaeda. But then meanwhile, the whole system is rolled out against the American people. And this is just another signpost on the road to tyranny, on the road to serfdom, illustrating how the paramilitary control grid has been set up and deployed against the American people. Bottom line, Al-Qaeda is a cover story. We've given you the Mayak report and all the other internal documents that prove this apparatus is designed for the American people. And it's being rolled out nationwide with the TSA on the streets of America. It's being rolled out with governors shooting their mouths off saying, 
You got a problem with me? Armed force is standing by. The globalists know the American people are awakening. They know people are becoming aware of what's happening. And if they can sell the military and police on going along with this brazen attack on our liberty and to be this homeland brigade to suppress us here at home, they're going to get away with it. It's only going to get worse from here on out unless we get the word out and take our states back legally and lawfully through the 10th Amendment. You have been warned. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Live. It is 12, 11, and 14 seconds Central Standard Time. We are now into Friday's transmission. I am Alex Jones, your host. Thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to continue in through and beyond live into tomorrow's official radio show, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, coming up, we've just got an amazing lineup uh, of guests that are going to be joining us. Uh, we've got so many people uh, coming on with us this evening. But I want to put up on screen for you the InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com website right now for all the viewers out there. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for buying the books, the DVDs, the T-shirts, the information, for spreading the word over the years. We are a testament against tyranny. Now, if you want to donate at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com, now is the time to do it. InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com. And uh, we've got Corbett joining us until uh, about 50 minutes from now when Fritz Springmeyer joins us. And then Aaron Dykes is going to take over a few hours. Paul Watts and Richard Reeves. And I'm back all the way through the show tomorrow with Alan Watt, Jim Mars, Gerald Salente, Bob Chapman, uh, and others. Jesse Ventura called me, talked to him a couple times tonight. Uh, they have thrown out his case against the TSA. We have raised, uh, they haven't updated it yet. I'm told it's right at $200,000, which is awesome. We can hire three or four new people, buy some of the equipment we need. If we hit 500000 that ensures the nightly news. And all we're doing here in the face of the global is to take your money forcibly at IRS gunpoint and make you pay into this whole system. For those of you out there, I don't want little old ladies or people on a fixed income donating to us. I don't want $5. I just want you to spread the word about the show. But if you're middle class or wealthy and you're tired of this system, you should donate right now at InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or go to InfoWars.com. You can do it. You've also got the crew in their answer in the phones. It's 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. Now, James Corbett has been around, I don't know, five, six years, has a great uh, TV show he does, and he does stuff for global research as well, and he's a frequent uh, guest here on air with us, and he joins us for the rest of the hour. James, with all the things happening in the world right now, before I get to all my questions, what is front and center on your radar screen right now? Well, obviously here in Japan, where it seems to be a bright and sunshiny day over here, but that just belies the fact that 700 kilometers from where I am, unfortunately, Fukushima is continuing to, to act up and to do strange things that, uh, that can't be accounted for yet. So I definitely want to get into that. But before I do, let me just say thank you for having me on today and th thank you for letting me be a part of this. And uh, I'd like to put, put the call out for any Corbett Report supporters out there in the uh, audience. I'd like to challenge them to do exactly what I've just done, which is donate to the InfoWars Money bomb because i've said it before and i'll say it again I, uh, there would be no corporate report without the alex jones show without infowars.com without prisonplanet.tv without all of the incredible information that you've been putting out for for decades now um there just wouldn't be a corporate report because the information can come from many sources but the message the core heart and kernel of infowars which is that people can get out there and take action into their own hands and to put this information into other people's hands that was what motivated me to start the corporate report in the first place so my hat's off to you for all your incredible work over the years, and uh, I hope that people out there will support uh, the InfoWars project. Well, James, thank you. That, that's always been my mission, is to get researchers and thinkers and people like yourself to take action and get involved. That's where we have true safety, is in numbers, and people like yourself taking action. I want to get into what's happening in Greece, Iran, Libya, all the things you've been covering, the fake bin Laden killing, 
uh, this man of peace, this Peace Prize winner, Obama, and all of his wars. But before we get into that, let's talk about Fukushima. You know, we go back six, eight months ago, the explosions, the radiation, the EPA raising the level of what's safe. Uh, the whole government of Japan having to basically resign, the leaders over a cover-up. And now we're told fission is continuing in the last week. Uh, the, the black belching death of radiation is continuing to leak out on the people of Japan and across the Pacific wreaking havoc into North America. Exactly right. And, and let's go through the last week because there's been some pretty big things happening, especially because they've been trying to tell us for a while now that everything's under control. Go back to sleep. No need to, to look at this or worry about it. Um, everything's going into cold shutdown. It'll be done even earlier than expected. So there's nothing to worry about anymore. And that's the message that's been going out through uh, TEPCO and the Japanese government and the mainstream media. But some very worrying signs cropped up this week that that's definitely not the case. And uh, for people who are interested in this, there are, there are really very few sites on the net that are devoted to this issue. Uh, there are a few really good ones out there. So, But I decided to create my own website, FukushimaUpdate.com, where I'm going through hundreds of articles every day and trying to put highlight the best ones uh, on the situations. And there, there's just uh, so few websites out there that are really doing that. So I hope more people will take that up and start spreading this information. But, uh, but let's go through this week. On Wednesday morning at about 2.30 a.m. Japanese time, uh, the uh, TEPCO had detected some high levels of xenon-135, which is a uh, byproduct of nuclear fission. So they were uh, very concerned about that, and they started pu uh, pumping boric acid uh, into the uh, reactor 2, the, the molten slag heap that is reactor 2 at this point, and uh, in order to try to contain that reaction, that, that fission that they, they had detected, um, although they didn't detect it directly, they detected it through the xenon-135. They, uh, they did that in 2.30 in the morning on Wednesday, and then uh, they came out that day and said, well, yes, it seems that criticality, recriticality has been achieved. That is, the, the molten slag heap in the bottom of the, the reactor there has somehow, amazingly, actually started spontaneous fission again, which shouldn't be able to happen because it requires the fuel to be packed in the right way with the right, uh, the right water in the right way, and, and everything happening should be, it should be the case that it has to be a certain special uh, series of events that have to take place for, for criticality to be achieved. Well, just to interrupt, like to, you know, my dad only took one semester of physics at UT, but they have a nuclear reactor there back in the 60s, and physicists I've had on, and Dr. Busby and others, they say that naturally, through electrolysis or whatever, that these systems kind of percolate into layers, and that naturally it can purify into levels to create this fission. And regardless, they've now admitted this is now happening. Well, they, they came out and admitted it later on that day, but uh, but the latest, the very latest from NHK is that uh, TEPCO retracts criticality call. And they're basically saying that, uh, no, our mistake, the xenon-135 doesn't mean that the, the, uh, a continuing reaction has occurred. It means that uh, there's been spontaneous nuclear fission of radioactive curium-242 and 244, and it's just spontaneous fission. It's not a big deal. It's not an ongoing concern. And I think the overwhelming message of this is, once again, go back to sleep. It's not such a big deal. And uh, and one of the interesting things that slipped out when they were admitting that uh, they had detected this uh, this fission going on in two is that they were also detecting uh, other things going on in one and three, and they weren't ruling out.